Okay, Larry, we are just south of historic Pioneer Square at Century Link Field in the beautiful city of Seattle, Washington. Tonight, on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Gurley found the end zone in week 14, 61 yards on 16 carries. Still in search of that first 100-yard game of the season. And it's strange because this dude is a stud. Absolutely. And there's a reason he was drafted where he was. Top 10 when everyone said, don't take a running back there. Coming off of a knee injury in college, fantastic rookie season. We expect him to build on it. It's been a combination of blocking his own vision and just not being able to save the run long enough. Todd Gurley not having the year we expected. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. Six yards on the pickup, and just like that, it's third down. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw completion. Trying a little razzle-dazzle on third and short. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. yardage back at the 17 a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down and the offense there the o-line everybody really on offense they were just manhandled at the point of attack yeah you could pretty much call them all out couldn't you <laughs> almost by name right that was a very tough sequence for the offensive line but how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility to throw is Wilson, and that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Okay. They go play action with Wilson. He's got time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Robert Quinn with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively, pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That, too. <laughs> That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But we just saw the recipe for success right there. Big body, strong, agile, playing with great leverage and hands. 
Not really able to be blocked on that play. Close things down inside. Again, they run with Gurley. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because then you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. Throwing on third. Gone. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Johnny Hecker now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up, let's see what the defense does here too after a good stop. Wilson drops it underneath for Rawls. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. They come out here in the eye. On second down, Rawls. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. And that man, Thomas Rawls, one of the few Seahawks you could say actually looked good in that loss to Green Bay. 12 carries, 67 yards, carried only three times in the second half because they were so far behind trying to throw their way back into it. And as we well know, that's not the normal way Seattle runs their offense. For years, they've been tailback-centric, right? You run it through those guys first, and Russell Wilson makes plays off of that. This year, they have shifted up. They've run it through the quarterback first, but with Rawls back, you know they want to hand it to him more than 12 times. You know what I want to do right now while we have a moment? I want to hand out Charles Davis's hardware for top performers week 14. Okay, if we're going to do that, can we start with Le'Veon Bell with the Pittsburgh Steelers? Sure, Ward. 236 yards on the ground, ended up with 298 overall in the snow in Buffalo and led his team to a win. Who else you got? I know you like Vic Beasley's performance for Atlanta. Well, three sacks, including a touchdown after the strip sack. He picked it up and ran it in. And I have to mention Aaron Rodgers. Playing hurt. Had a hamstring two weeks ago, a calf this week. The Packers are on a nice little run now, pressing for a playoff spot. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. That's exactly what he got done there. First down, this is Rawls. And he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. We saw in 2015, Mark Barron really emerge in the NFL. Yeah, as a defensive back, 16 tackles for a loss, but now... How about where he's at now? Yeah, truthfully, he's no longer a defensive back. He's really an outside linebacker, but he doesn't want to hear that. So as coach tells him, you're a defensive back. Just Makes play feel over better. here. That's all. Complete out right to Curves. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. He dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's John Ryan now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. 
And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. And he'll get three up to midfield. Ataba Rubin makes the stop. I'm still astounded by the recovery of Todd Gurley from the knee injury at Georgia. The offensive rookie of the year in his first season. Yeah, over 1,100 yards, and now, you know, they drafted the rookie, Jared Goff. Kind of see him as their future, but so much of the focus has to be on Gurley this year, doesn't it? And the future becomes now if Todd Gurley keeps running the football the way that we've seen him run it in the past because that will make it easier to break in a rookie quarterback. Golf. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Yeah, that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Here's Goff now on second down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. From the gun on third down, gone. Finding time. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold it. He up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it, be aggressive, because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Well, we'll see what his offense can do. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. On second down, Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Here's Wilson. And that is incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. Now fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's John Ryan now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Austin. 
A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now gone. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the offense readies for a second and four. Hey, 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 hey. Now let's go. 319. 319. To throw on second down is gone. And his throw is incomplete. Brian Quick, the intended target. And it's third down. And now it's a third and four situation for the offense. Four down, four down. Now let's go. Blue landing. A shotgun snap for gone. And he will find his man. It's Kenny Brand. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. down throw gone and his throw is going to be incomplete he was looking to get it to Kenny Britt that time that'll bring up second down as a general rule receivers love the comeback route because it puts them right in the sight lines of the guy throwing the ball but in this case the defenders saw it and were able to knock it away 10 yards still left on second down Second and 10, golf again. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. So they kick it through to take the lead. There is a little bit of time left, though, here in the second quarter. And while they're concerned about not giving up a big return or giving up points themselves going into the half, how good do they feel, though, putting points on the board themselves right near the end of the first half? After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But 
we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. As we send you across the country to Orlando, standing by there, Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry, this field at the two. Oh, what a move. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Completes it to Marcel Reese. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 17 that time. And it's good enough for a Seattle first. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing four down, of the route. Four down, check. Four down, four down. All right. All right. Wilson going to give to Rawls. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They go again with Rawls. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. The best defensive lineman, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. A pretty good coverage there. And both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And that is... And this score will stay right where it is. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. The one running back is Gurley. They're going to give it to him running right. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. Just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Defensively, the tackle by Cam Chancellor. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Right. 
Here's Goff now on second down. And this one hauled in by Tavon Austin. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. On first down, it's Gurley. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. The tackle made by K.J. Wright. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, here's Goff. And his throw here is incomplete. The intended receiver, Tavon Austin. And it'll bring up third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Goff now to throw. Looking for someone to throw to. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Timing is crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So it's only three points on this opening drive of the third quarter. And even though that stretches out the lead, Charles, I think you'd have to consider this a win for the defense, no? Couldn't agree more, Brandon. That offense got themselves in prime position to really open up this ball game, but the drive stalled out. And yeah, three points is very easy to get back in today's NFL. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. Now Wilson on first down. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end curling in the middle of the field. So it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. Rawls, the lone man in the backfield. And he'll get it up the middle. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. A second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Now a play fake here on first down. And that's complete to Luke Wilson. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. So he got his hands a little too far outside. The ref caught him through the flag. I really don't know where to go with this one. He caught the pass, but in the opposite direction towards his own end zone. That's not one you get every game. 
So now the offense is facing a first down and 20 after that last mistake. They'll come out in the pistol. From the shotgun, Wilson surveying the field. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. On second down, Wilson. And left side here, it's Graham. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. So third down, and defensively, the Rams have added two extra DBs. On third down, Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And now it's fourth down. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do on the game. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Just a yard on the first down carry. So it's second and nine. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. To throw on second down is gone. Completes it to Quick. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. No matter how you evaluate quarterbacks, at some point arm strength is going to come into the conversation. I'm really impressed by what I saw on that throw on the out route. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. They come up at an offset eye. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. No gain on the play there. Second down. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. Time is starting to run out, really becoming a factor. We'll see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back to the offense. Right, now on second down, this is Gurley. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. On the counter, Gurley. And he is going to loop. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been terrific so far. Ah! 
And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bad to be gained from it. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. Back to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is, and the running back dropped it. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right, the overall game sheet. But you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, it's such a close game, a very big one. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. He finds his man, Baldwin. It'll be a gain of 24 on the play. And on fourth and long, somehow they're able to keep the drive going. And now they're in the hurry up. He'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Still needing 10 yards, second down. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Back to throw. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Let's see what the defense dials up here. Third and four. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball. And in an out route, plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot? Balls out of his hands. Receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And, and nothing but green grass here. Middle of the field. And this defense has broken it open as they return it to the house for six. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room where they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. So they're going to go for two. Strong left. Strong left. Strong left. All right, here we go. Blue Blue. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And this play is going nowhere fast as he goes down. That one might need to go back to the drawing board as they fail on the two-point try.
And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And Charles, in this situation, this is where the word miracle comes into play. Have to score real fast, maybe throw a jump ball in the end zone and hope for the best. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. First and ten, it's Wilson. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. And now the spike with 36 seconds left to go. Well, they've gone backwards so far in this series. Third and 13. Third and long. It's Wilson. Complete. Richardson has it. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And they're going to speed things up here. So there's the spike as it comes with 23 seconds to go. It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On second down, here's Wilson. And that's complete to Luke Wilson. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Here's Wilson. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it's becoming increasingly clear now that the Rams are going to win this football game. with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one.
Charles, this is not an easy place to win. They are known for having such a great crowd. But how about that? They came in here, they were determined from the opening kick, and they got it done. And they've done such a great job at putting an excellent team on the field. But the architects that built this stadium to keep the noise in, and that crowd responds in a big way. But you're exactly right. Hard to believe that people can still come in here and win the game. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night.